Okay. So what are we doing scientifically for Evolve and Archaea Active? Initially, we were skeptical of Evolve. We have projects coming to us every day. This is a great product. It'll do this to the human physiognomy. It'll do that. Show me. Especially when we were told of a water with an, the ability to raise O2 saturation levels in people. Hmm, it's interesting. A water with apparent curative powers. A technology with antioxidant powers. There were many, many testimonials and stories that sounded amazing. Encouraging, but amazing. The Evolve organization wanted solid science to back this up. When Trey said that they were investing everything in establishing a solid platform, that's exactly what we were told. And we were asked, would we consider looking deeply into this water and trying to figure out how it works? If it works, how it works, and for whom. We thought about it and we said, well, why don't we do some preliminary testing? So we agreed to do some preliminary testing. I'm going to show some charts and graphs here. I'm just going to summarize them. You don't need to be a biologist. If you look at the red line down there, that's just regular distilled water. If you look at the blue line, that is evolved water. And if you look at the green line, that's evolved water that's been concentrated or evaporated by about 50%. Interesting, because there's a dose response there. But what we're talking about was a little test tube test to show that oxygen uptake was enhanced in human blood. Just in blood in a test tube, not in the body. But that was interesting. We said, OK, here's something we can hang our hat on. So we agreed to go forward. Here's another graph showing how evolved water worked better than distilled water. Now, does this prove conclusively that it has an effect in your body? No. But what does it tell us? That there is an activity that's measurable. So we tested it some more. We submitted our report to Evolve. Trey and all of his associates said, this is really encouraging. Would you consider going forward with us? And we said, yes, based upon this, we have time to work on this. So oxygen uptake and utilization, why is that so important? Well, here's a little. Thing, lady saying, every day I walk for 30 minutes, I drink my glasses of water, I eat the right food, but I'm still growing older. The target test, the science of biomarkers. Aging is inevitable, but healthier aging is definitely possible. And organizations like the National Institute of Health agree with that. Biomarkers present us with a new paradigm for healthier lives. What are these biomarkers? Biomarkers are enzymes and proteins that float around in our blood that we can measure. And they change. And they have been associated with prevention of or creation of long-term diseases. So the whole theory is, if you can figure out how to measure the level of these biomarkers, and then perhaps how to change the level of some of the biomarkers, you can actually influence your down, downstream health. Look at this chart. This chart shows a human life. And if you look all the way to the left, you'll see when we're young, we're at very low risk for chronic disease. And as we get older, there's more risk. Modern medicine concentrates mainly on the phase at the back end, when we've already gotten sick 
and they're treating symptoms. They wait until we're treating, they have to treat the symptoms. But there's a time when we're younger when our biomarkers are already starting to go toward abnormal levels. And if we could intervene there, we could slow down the progression of aging. For example, with glucose, you'll see all these values. If you have a glucose, a fasting glucose of 90, you're pretty healthy. When you get to 110, you're already moving into a diabetic frame. And if you stay in that frame, toward the end, you're going to have structural changes, eye damage, you'll have lack of circulation in your extremities, your kidneys can fail, it goes on and on, and you'll get coronary ar artery disease, too. So if you look at these two charts, you can see a normal life on the left, where the green represents symptoms of disease, and the red represents the level of abnormal biomarkers showing up. And if you notice, even by our 30s and 40s, our biomarkers are out of whack, but we're not showing any symptoms. But by the age of 50, about half of us are sick. About half of us are on statin drugs, Lipitor, rosiglitazone, trying to lower our blood sugar, trying to lose weight. We have problems. But the chart on the right shows a life where the biomarkers were controlled a bit more. Now, the person doesn't live any longer, but they live healthier. Fewer symptoms, less medicine toward the end. So changes in your blood targets appear before you have symptoms. And if you could control those, whammo, you're on to a healthier life. That's what we're looking at with Evolve. We are taking Evolve and we're looking at series of biomarkers. Why do we need to manage these biomarkers? Here's a classic example. Years ago, before medicine started keeping us alive longer, you'd see um, a person in their 60s looked pretty old. But if you look at the bottom, today it's possible if you live correctly to look younger longer, be healthier longer, and be able to move and be part of your family, part of your career, pursue your dreams much longer. From a science perspective, managing these biomarkers allows the building of a clear vision of health based upon well-published peer-reviewed journals. There's a wide body of science supporting these biomarkers. Uh, from a marketing perspective, it makes it possible to design provocative products that consumers are going to be interested in because there's a huge consumer benefit. Here are a few of the biomarkers that we look at. If you look close, you'll see things like cardiovascular disease, um, metabolic disease, inflammation, et cetera, et cetera. We're looking at literally dozens of markers in human blood. And we are also looking at genes and cascades of genes and how they're affected by various food materials. We're doing this with Evolve. So with our research and discovery program, we would, for example, take Evolve water and we would do an in vitro test. We'd put it in the test tube and then we'd run this whole panel of, of different analyses using microchips, cascades of genes, chemical analyses. We'd measure it for antioxidants. I mean, we're looking at this 12 ways to Tuesday. When we see activity, that gives us a clue because we're testing it in human blood outside of the body. Now stay with me. I know this is dense, but it's worth it. When we get the clues, then we'll take it to people and do clinical studies because we already know how to measure and what to look for by what we saw in the ex vivo testing. This is cutting edge science. To our best knowledge, no one in our industry is doing this kind of research.